Well, we are in our series of growth, right? And uh, I look around to, uh, uh, I guess, a three-quarter full auditorium. We see a bunch of people on Zoom. We have uh, a lot of things that we've accomplished this year. And uh, we are three-quarters of the way through the year. Can you imagine three-quarters of the way through 2020? Does it seem like 2020 just started? Yes. It seems like it just started. And it just seemed like it just unraveled, right? Like somebody just pulled that thread and it just, just kind of all fell apart, right? Right from the beginning, I remember we were reminiscing last night when we were over in Israel in uh, February and uh, they closed the border the day after we got out of Israel. It was just crazy. And then, uh, and then here we are in this, in this gr- theme of growth and trying to figure out how to make heads or tails of it all. And how do you continue to grow when it seems like everything around you is just kind of falling apart, right? We, uh, we've added people to the staff. We've, we've uh, increased the people, the, the salaries of those people on staff. We are uh, continuing to try to work on a, a project here, building project. We're on uh, next Monday, not tomorrow Monday, but the following Monday. We are actually starting a child care facility in this building. Now, it's going to be a... Uh, a, a moderate child care facility. We have to get licensing, but we're allowed by the state to have six children in this building. And, uh, and so we're working towards that. That'll be starting that Monday. And uh, with hopes that we're going to be uh, doing some modifications in the building, changing out some doors. We have a very expensive uh, range hood we have to put above our stove, apparently. So I'm going to install that. And we're thinking about doing a parking lot out here before winter, trying to, but I know everybody's busy. And uh, it's just, we're just trying to keep growing. Uh, Hopefully you guys are reading books. Hopefully you guys are learning. Hopefully you guys are maybe spending some time exercising, right? We talked about all of these things. So what I'm going to do is uh, I want to give you just kind of a real refresher here. This is our time of review. And I want to talk real quickly about all of the people we've talked about within the Bible thus far this year. So this is going to be a crash course, cliff note type of message. So get out your pens, and I want you to write down some things that might inspire you as we, as we literally usher through this thing really quickly. We talked about growth this year. We talked about growing uh, in our physical fitness. We talked about growing in our financial freedom. We talked about growing in our educational enlightenment. And, of course, we talked about spiritual success. We want to be spiritually successful. More than anything else, we want to be spiritually successful. I gave you four quick things. I said we got to pray more. we got to read more. we got to memorize more. we got to evangelize more. You know, there's nothing wrong with more when it's in the direction of God, right? Now, we need to be content with whatsoever state we are in, right? I mean, that's a, a biblical mandate. However, God wants us to grow. God doesn't want us to remain the same lukewarm Christians we've been for years or the same baby infant Christians we've we've become, you know, or that we are. God wants us to grow up into maturity. He wants us to grow in grace and in knowledge. So there needs to be this, uh, in order to have success, really, we we have to grow. We have to move forward. So we talked about several people. We, We first of all started with Adam. That was the very first message we had in our growth series. This was this was uh, pre-COVID, of course, right? And uh, we talked about his creation, Adam's creation. And I gave you two quick subpoints. I think are very powerful. Adam had tremendous opportunity. When I think about somebody who had more opportunity than, than, than anybody in all the Bible, it was Adam. He had options galore. He could have done this, and he could have done this, and he could have done that. And you know what? He ended up choosing wrongly. A guy who was in a a state of perfection, he failed. Adam had opportunity. He was created in the image of God. He had perfect surroundings. He had perfect physical fitness, mental, and he was in mental and spiritual shape. You you couldn't ask for a, a a better poster child for success. If you were to see a, a poster of somebody who had success written on him, it would have been Adam. And he had a lot of options, but he failed. He had a command. So we looked at Adam's creation, we looked at Adam's command, and then we looked at Adam's 
consequence. You know, it's interesting to me that when we fail to grow this year, it's only our fault. You know, we can blame a lot of things. We can blame uh, the, the, the COVID. We can blame riots. We can blame our, the politicians. We can blame our spouses and our children and, and, and all of our lack of opportunities. But the, re- the reality is, is, is if you don't grow this year, it's your fault. It's your fault. Do you remember we started off this year by saying, it's my fault. Do you remember that? Can we say that again? It's my fault. Let's say it. One, two, three. It's my fault. One more time. It's my fault. If you don't grow this year, it's your fault. Don't blame your neighbor. It's amazing how quick we are to shift blame. And you know what? He did, didn't he? Lord, it's this woman you gave me. Now, the reality is if you, you can blame your spouse. You can. But whose fault really was it? It's Adam's fault he didn't grow. Growth this year is all about what you do with it. Then we talked about Eve. Now, she was up against some, some serious opposition here, okay? Let's not, let's not uh, minimize the fact that the devil was against her, okay? As is the devil's against us. So uh, let's, let's, not take, let's not minimize it. Let's not take it for granted. We have opposition. And she had some opposition, and we learned about the subtlety of the, the subtlety of the serpent. And the subtlety of the serpent is trying to get you not to grow. That's very subtle, isn't it? You're okay where you're at. You're okay where you're at. You don't, you don't have to work so hard. There, there, there's no need to, there's no need to, 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 to hurry, to work that hard. That's pretty subtle. The subtlety of the serpent. We looked at also the suggestion of the serpent. The suggestions of the serpent. They seemed harmless, didn't they? It's amazing to me that the devil always tries to be so subtle by giving you these little suggestions, these little hints like, oh, you're not that bad. You're not that bad. You, 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 you make enough money. Oh, you're, you're, you're fine where you're at. Oh, your health, is, your health is okay. You don't have to work on your marriage. Your marriage is fine. You, you guys said to death do you part. It's a small hint, small subtlety, isn't it? The fact is, is the Bible... The Bible wants us to grow. The Bible really is about change. It's about conforming into the image of God's Son. It's about being somebody different. And this all starts by increasing our faith. We looked at that in Luke 17, 5, and the apostle said unto the Lord, increase our faith. Very powerful. Increase our faith. We talked about Cain and Abel. Uh, Cain and Abel, that's, uh, we talked about Cain's trouble. Cain had some serious, serious trouble. One commentator said that the trouble with Cain was that he had his own ideas about God and about the way God should be approached. When we have our own ideas about how we should grow, we're going to miss the mark. Let me ask you a question this morning, church. Have you asked God what's, what way he wants you to grow this year? Some people just step on the gas and they just say, well, I'm just going to do it this way. As opposed to getting on their knees, on their face before God and saying, Lord, how is it that you want me to grow? How is it that we should approach you? You see, Cain had his own idea about how to approach God. He, he had his own idea about success. This is, what, this is what I think will please God. That's what, he, that's what he said. This is what I think will please God. This is what I think will please my family or what I think will, 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 will please other people. But how many times have you said, God, how is it that I can please you? Have you prayed this prayer? This was Cain's trouble. And Cain had a tremendous temptation, and we, we, we have this similar temptation as well. He, he, was, he, was, he was proud. He was proud. 
He also, he also was, was envious, wasn't he? Envious of his brother. We looked at Cain's uh, transgression. We have to be careful of that. So we looked at Adam and Eve. We looked at Abraham. Abraham was a, a very powerful Old Testament figure. We looked at Abraham's faithfulness. Faithfulness is critical in the growth process. If you are not being faithful, you're not going to grow. You see, Abraham started and he trusted in the promises of God. Abraham trusted in the promises of God. And without God's promises, nothing else really matters, does it? Your, uh, your salvation doesn't matter if God's promises aren't real. Your uh, security doesn't matter if God's promises aren't real. Rewards, the rewards that he's said that you'll have for your faithfulness, don't worry about those either. You have to trust in these promises. You have to trust in his return and his provision and protection. And, and the first thing he did was he surrendered his safety, wasn't it? Abraham went out. He surrendered his safety. And then he went on to sacrifice his son or offered his son as a sacrifice anyway. But then we looked at Abraham's failures as well. And one of the biggest failures we all experience is to lose our conviction. How many times have you lost your conviction where, where maybe one day it was, it was powerful, it was really significant to you where you said, I am convinced. And eventually, that conviction began to subside. And this is exactly what happened to Abraham. One commentator says, conviction means doing what is right instead of doing what is easy. And Abraham didn't do what was right. He did what was easy. And he began to fail. We looked at his failures. We looked at Joseph. I mentioned to you that you have to make some assumptions when it comes to growth is that you are your best advocate. You know, it's amazing to me on, on, on you know, you look, at the, you look at the blame game, the blame shifting game that Adam did with Eve, and, and you know, we're all, we all can do that. But now Joseph didn't do that. He was his best advocate, wasn't he? Uh, he? He didn't have, his brothers certainly weren't looking out for him, and we looked at his brothers. I mean, he faced a tremendous, tremendous opposition with just his own brothers, and how many times has your family been your opposition to grow? Oh, you don't have to go to college. You, you don't have to work so hard. You don't have to save so much. Why are you doing it that way? You cannot do it that way. Oftentimes, it's the people within our own home that oppose us the most. We saw this with Joseph. We saw this with Joseph's boss. His boss was obviously not for him. I mean, in Genesis 39, Joseph was literally being trapped by his boss's wife, and, uh, and he escapes, leaving coat in hand. And he says this, he says, how can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? He knew... He knew what he should do, and he did it. And of course, uh, the boss comes along and throws him in prison. His boss wasn't for him. His brothers were not for him. And certainly his buddies had forgotten about him. Remember the two people in prison? They said, well, one of you is going to die, and the other one, when you get out, let me just say this, can you remember me? Do you think your buddies are really in it for your benefit? It is amazing to me how many times we entrust our, our family at times, right, and, and our employers and our friends with our growth. You are your best advocate. And if you don't grow, it's your fault. People say, look at all these, look at all these uh, really prominent, successful people. Okay. And the reason you're not is because they are? No. You are your best advocate. We also looked on the, on, the, on the positive side, on the positive side of Joseph, 
And uh, I mentioned to you that he really believed in his place. He believed that he was in the place of God. Can I tell you something this morning, friends, that if you don't believe that you are where you should be, you're, if you're not convinced, there is no way that you're going to be convincing to other people. There is absolutely no way for you to really be successful until you know that you are where you should be. You know, we've got, we've got a lot of options, right? Well, I, I just don't know if this is if this is the marriage for me. But you said to death to your part, it's the marriage for you. That's God's will right now for your life. Until she dies or until she kills you. <laughs> this is God's will for your life. Well, I, I don't know if this is the job. I mean, how can you really put your shoulder into the plow if you're not convinced? Let me ask you a question. Are you interested or are you committed? Are you interested or are you committed? And there's a lot of Christians who are just interested in the Christian life. He believed in his place. And you know what? Secondly, he behaved with God's grace. Now here's a guy who, who could have just decimated the whole family. I mean, he had, uh, I mean, in a sense, I mean, you've got to imagine, Egypt was very powerful. He had taken out his whole family. I mean, here his brothers are, and they come to him weeping, be merciful. He could have said, gone. You know what? He showed grace, didn't he? How many of us would have done what Joseph did? That is real growth right there. When you have the world against you, when you have your family against you and your employer against you and all of your friends against you and you still know that this is where I need to be and you behave with grace. You can't almost ask for a better example of somebody who is convinced, fully pers- let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. He was persuaded. This is who I am. Do you behave with God's grace? We looked at Lot. Now, this is a hard example. I mean, I tell you, you learn a lot from people who make mistakes. So we looked at two things. We looked at Lot's decisions, and then we looked at Lot's destruction. It's amazing that good decisions lead to great results. And poor decisions lead to poor results. And he he made some decisions here, uh, not, not good ones. And so we looked at his decisions. We looked at his uh, destruction because of those decisions. And I concluded saying this. Grow this grow this year and beware that you're decisions do not lead to your destruction. It's amazing how many, how many uh, choices we have, right? Do, do I want to stand on this side of the pulpit? Do I want to stand on this side of the pulpit? What do I want to have? You're going to have a potluck in just a little, little bit, and, and you're going to have a, a bunch of choices. And now your choices could lead to weight gain. Could. It could lead to obesity. It could lead to diabetes. It is amazing to me how many choices we have and how many bad decisions we make related to those choices. We need to be careful of that. Because when I look at Lot's wife, I mean, he drug his entire family into this. I I mean, Sodom was burned, his wife was turned to a pillar of salt, and his children... Uh, became drunk and committed incest with him. I mean, all because of bad decisions. Are you making good decisions? We looked at, uh, we looked at Matthew. Uh, Matthew was one of these reviled tax collectors. He was the IRS. Now, I, I, I don't mind paying taxes. I think we pay too many, too many taxes. I, I, I believe that. I, I think we do. I think that sometimes our tax money is not used appropriately, but I don't mind paying taxes. I mean, we drive on, well, I don't call them roads, really. 
We, we drive on these things they call roads. And that's where the tax money goes. You can see how it's misappropriated, right? But we, th that we have infrastructure. We have the police department. We have military. I, I don't mind paying taxes when the money goes towards those things. But there is another side, and Matthew fell on that side. And, uh, and he was, he was not uh, necessarily like. This is who Matthew was. He was a tax collector. And I'm telling you what, if you're honest with yourself, a lot of us don't really like who we were and maybe who we are. And so growth is moving from disdain to distinguish. That's what it is. That's what it is. And we saw who Matthew was, and then we saw who he became. We, 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 he responded rapidly. Remember, he, he left all and rose up and followed him. That was his rapid response to the calling of God. He responded rapidly, and he witnessed willingly. I mentioned, you know, how eager are you to tell people of the good things in your life? I mean, how, how eager are you to tell people to champion the cause of Jesus Christ? I mean, do you get out there? Are, do you, people always talk about the, the new shiny coin they find or the new car they buy or whatever. I mean, you do that, it's fine. But let me tell you, are you eager to tell people about Christ? Are you excited to tell people that Jesus died for me? I tell you, what a great privilege it was to stand at Faith and Freedom and be able to tell people about Jesus. Now, it was only a minute long, but I was eager. How eager are you to be a witness for Christ? We looked at Judas. Judas had a terrible, terrible bitterness problem. And bitterness will keep you from winning. It will actually keep you from, from growing this year. You, you know, Judas's problem, one of his problems, was he was bummed out that others were winning when he was, in fact, losing. And, and I tell you, it's, it's, it's a shame to be in, 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 a, in a culture where we are so angry at other people who win. I love the fact that there are winners out there. It proves that I can win, too. It's exciting. Are you excited to help other people to, to win? Hey, listen, friends, if we're on a team, and if Ben wins, I win. You know, if the pastor wins, the church wins, and if the church wins, the pastor wins. That's exciting. But you know what? We're in a society now, it's, it's bitter against somebody else who's winning. We can be excited that other people actually win. Praise God for that. This bitterness drew, drove uh, Judas to his betrayal. Kind of caused him to cheat, to sell our Lord. He's so angry that it wasn't going his way. You're not going to grow if you're, you're always angry because other people are growing. So we looked at his betrayal. We also looked at uh, Peter. Peter was a, a good example. He trusted God for salvation. We need to trust God for salvation. He, he trusted God for safety. We looked at, his, uh, at the incident where he was on the boat. Trusted him for, for safety. And, of course, he, uh, he trusted God for sustenance. Let me say this. We have to trust God for salvation. We have to trust God for salvation. Or safety, but we also have to trust God for sustenance, for his provision. Hey, listen, when we grow this year, we cannot be so fixated on growth that we take out of the picture God, leave a gap for God to do what God does good. He's the one who is actually the one creating all of this growth in your life. And so many of us say, well, I am going to do this by myself. And the reality is you can't do it by yourself. You need God to help you grow in the direction that's good. We looked at Shamgar, back into the Old Testament, a judge. We looked at his, uh, that he was responsible. This is a guy who was responsible. Uh, he worked when he needed to work. I mean, you don't kill 600 Philistines with an ox goad 
uh, by being lazy. That, 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 that dude, he brought it. I mean, he was, he was in it to win it, man. I mean, I, you got to imagine, if I had Aksha, I'd be like, really? Lord, something else would be a little easier, you know? I mean, why not an Uzi or something, you know? And he's left with an ox goad. And you know what? I think the reason he won was because he was faithful in his focus and he was frequent in his fight. How many of us get distracted by the things of the world? We get distracted. So we saw that he was responsible. We also saw that he was resourceful. I mentioned three things. said, start where you are, use what you have, and do what you can. Friends, winning, winning is to start where you are, use what you have, and to do what you can. That's what winning is about. We also looked at Moses and a prominent Old Testament figure. He had a real rough go at this. He had, he had a, a real, I mentioned several things, he had a disinterested people. And uh, it's really hard to get other people to grow when they're not even interested in growing. There are a lot of people that do not have what you would call a growth mindset. How many people do you know that just that, that, that have no, no desire to grow? And they might say things like this. Well, I, I'm not able to grow or, or I, I just, God didn't make, they invoke God into this. God didn't make me like that. God didn't make me one of those people that are just going to grow. Oh, so now it's God's fault. <laughs> it's funny how we just shift everything. Lord, it's the woman you gave me. Lord, it's your fault. You didn't, you didn't give me this ability to grow. Well, he wouldn't have commanded you to do all of these things to grow if he didn't give you the ability, right? He had a dis, disinterested people. Then he had a disgusted people. When things weren't going the way that they should have gone, well, then, they, then they get disgusted. Boy, Lord, you, it, Moses, it was much better back then. Back then. We, we just where we had all this food and water and things of that nature. And I mentioned to you that people aren't happy because things aren't going the way they used to be, but they aren't happy with the way things used to be. Now, you want to talk about a messed up people. I, I don't like the way things are, Lord, but I don't want to change. How many of us are guilty of that? Then he had a distracted people. But I tell you, focus is critical to growth. Focus is critical to growth. Don't be distracted. We talked about the good side of Moses, or bad side, rather, of Moses, and that was the fact that he, he lost his temper, he was angry, and then he lost his treasure. And friends, if you get angry during a year of growth because things aren't going the way that you thought they would be, you're not going to have the results, the wonderful blessing of God. Don't lose your temper, and you won't lose your treasure. We talked about David two weeks, three, four weeks ago, probably. Remember David, he was uh, this, uh, this man of war, and he should have been out to battle where kings were out to battle. Instead, he stayed back in Jerusalem, and because he wasn't where he should have been, he did what he shouldn't have done. And I tell you, if we, if we would just do what it is we are called to do. God calls you to battle, you go to battle. God calls you to sing a song, you sing a song. God calls you to, to, to run a race, you run a race. And had he had been where he should have been, he could have been where he could have been, right? I mean, there came a point in time in David's life that, well, he actually did want to go out to battle. And his, and his soldiers are like, oh, you're going to go back home, David. Go back home. You're useless to us. And you don't want that either, right? So we need to do what we should be doing. I mentioned to you that growth is about denying yourself yourself. Because there will come a time when you want the reward and you look back and you say, if I only would have gotten an education. If I only would have invested while I was young. If I only would have worked the fields. When everybody else around me is working the fields, I could be harvesting when everybody else is harvesting. 
The problem is, as we look at this, we say, I just don't feel like plowing and planting. I mean, that sounds so agrarian to me, you know? I like my couch. Well, hopefully you like to starve. Because the reality is, is that everybody wants to harvest, but nobody wants to plow. And so we need to do what we should be doing when we should be doing it. And then we talked about David's calling. David was called to be a king. He was called to be a king. Did you know something, that we are all made kings and priests? <laughs> it's kind of a fun thought. We're all called to be kings and priests. And when you're doing what God has called you to do, you have confidence. It's amazing that, that calling and confidence go hand in hand. And when you step outside of your calling, when you are not doing what you should be doing, you have no confidence. But when you're doing exactly what God called you to do and what he empowered you and equipped you to do, it gets easy. Then you can say, Lord, I'm in the place of God. I'm doing exactly what you have called me to do, and I'm going to do it to the best of my ability. Now, we still need to leave this gap for God, right? Because it's God that, in a sense, quickens you. It's God that gives you the power to be able to do all of the things that we do. You see, growth is vital. And when you look at any year, this is the year that growth is the most important. This is going to separate the, the, the men from the boys, the winners from the losers. That, that's this year. We're going to look back in history in 2040. And we're going to say, do you remember back in 2020 when the, the entire global economy shut down? Do you, do you remember when there were riots, and, and, and not just like little riots, like literally burning cities? Do you remember when the, the stock market just went up and just was kind of just wacko? Do you guys remember Y2K? Do you remember the, the paranoia? The paranoia was the, the world was going to shut down. And it was like January 2nd, like, dude, computers did what computers do. You know, who would have thought programming was solid? Now, I'm not saying there wasn't some confusion, but the bottom line is this. Maybe we have forgotten about that. Just the other day, we, we remembered 9-11. How many of y'all remember where you were at? I remember where I was at. How many of you remember it every day, though? How many of you remember it once a month? I tell you what. We tend to forget what God brought us from and what he brought us to. Friends, I hope you have confidence that God has called you to do what it is you're doing. Don't just be interested. Be committed. Growth is essential this year. Christianity is essential. We are essential workers. Nobody is going to do the work that we're going to do. I mean, there'll always be another carpenter. There'll always be a, a, another rocket scientist. But God has specifically called you to do a certain task. Respond rapidly and witness willingly. There are so many truths we can learn so many truths we can learn. I spent 30 minutes going over 70 pages of notes. Do you know how many hours of preaching that is? How many hours of study that is? I pray that you took note of some of these things. Whatever it was that stuck out to you the most in the first three quarters of the year, we have about another four messages, six messages left until we start getting into our Christmas theme. Never lose sight of growth. Growth is essential this year. You have to keep winning. You have to keep winning. You have to keep winning. Because if you're not winning, 
you're losing. I pray that you will grow physically, that you will grow financially, that you will grow intellectually. And the most important thing, I pray that you grow spiritually. You're going to have your ups and downs. You're going to have your days when you're reading your Bible. You're going to have days when you're not. But I pray that the trend is northward. Keep on keeping on. Let's not replicate the failures. Let's replicate the successes. We've got to keep winning. I think everyone here knows Christ is their Savior. What's neat is I was able to give the gospel to a thousand politicians last night. That's so cool. I was really going to whip out my wallet. I didn't want them to see how broke I was. You know, there's nothing worse than dropping something when you're on the platform. This one guy had an envelope in his, uh, in his uh, pocket. And I don't know what it was, but it was just a small envelope. Maybe it was a letter. And uh, it kept on coming out of his pocket. And it started like this, and it kept on going. And I totally was not thinking at all what he was. I mean, it was funny because I was in the back standing, and it kept on falling and kept on falling and kept on falling and kept on falling and kept on falling, kept on falling. Kept on falling. This was probably over the course of three, four minutes. Kept on falling. And finally, bloop, and I'm like, yes, it fell. Now, I have no idea what he said. What did he say? I have no idea. <laughs> Kind of those funny moments in time. It's like, ah, such a distraction. So I was going to give the wallet, but there's nothing like holding the wallet up there and then being all nervous and saying, this is us and this is our sin. Oh, my goodness. You know? <laughs> so you just stick with what you know. Anyway, I think everyone here knows Christ as their Savior. If you know him as your Savior, if you know he died for you, then let's live for him. And let's keep growing. Just keep growing. There is a video I watched years ago. It's an animated show called Finding Nemo. And their Nemo was with this, uh, with Dory. And they were swimming around and Dory was leading Nemo. And she says, just keep swimming, just keep swimming, just keep swimming. We just got to keep growing. Keep growing, keep sharing the gospel. And let us have a wonderful time of fellowship. I really hope all you stay. If you feel uncomfortable that you're going to get COVID or something like that, listen, COVID is real. I, f I finally know somebody who died with COVID, not because of COVID, but with COVID. I finally know somebody who's a, the daughter of an assistant pastor here in town. She's been in this building. I mean, not recently, Dory. But she's been in this building about a year ago, I guess. COVID's real, but if you feel uncomfortable staying in fellowshipping, I understand. It just leaves more food for me. <laughs> and uh, it's your loss is my weight gain. If you don't know Christ as your Savior, I pray today that you trust him as your Savior. You believe in the quietness of your mind, he died for you.